Right, fellow modellers. Um, I've been left in the comments on the build of this Brush Superior for me to do a video. Um, as I've said in the comments, I'm not great at doing videos. I'm more of a modeler than um, a video producer, I suppose you want to call it. Um, so this is like the first, if we carry on with it, if we do a video series, I'm thinking of doing a video series of building another one. Um, I don't know what bike it might be yet. Um, there's things in the way. Cost is one of them at the minute. So um, we'll see how this one goes uh, and see how it uh how you guys like it please be honest don't don't be shy of the comments um i'm a grown man i can take a hit or two uh, if you think it's rubbish and i should give up then please tell me because i'm not it's it's quite a daunting thing to talk to yourself for uh, 15 minutes so uh as i said there's nobody else in the house because i feel so self-conscious of talking to myself um <laughs> i'm doing it on my own so there goes anything so um Background behind this kit, really, I was asked, I've been building models for probably 30 years since I was a kid, really. I, I worked in a local model shop for 26 of them. Um, I started building for a, a, a company down in uh, in Oxfordshire. Um, I used to build for those. Uh, they used to send me a lot of kits. I thank them f immensely for what the kits they used to send me. Um, I would have never had a chance to build some of those kits. Um there was, you know, trans kits at the time. Trans kits was, if you don't know what a trans kit is, it was basically like resin parts, and you and you you've got a donor kit, which generally was it was a Tamiya kit, because of the parts was such a a, a quality kit, um, and so you you use parts from from the plastic kit and put them onto the the, the resin build that you was doing of whatever bike it was, tires, wheels, forks, whatever you would need, and you would assemble the kit that way. Um, and I basically used to do these kits and I used to buy decals from them and bits and pieces over the years and um, they, they had a website forming and they basically used to list um, kits that, 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 that they did but they never had a picture it was just a name of the bike and it was very difficult sometimes to actually see what kit you was buying or what decals you was buying because it, it was just a name so what I did I, I used to take pictures of the bikes I used to build and I just sent them some and I said look these are the kits that you're building uh, or you're, you're selling basically um you put these on your website you know you'll probably be able to send more so after that i got a, i got a call saying you know would you like to build and i just basically said no because i'm not good enough um and they just laughed and said look we'll send you a kit see what you build like send it back and if you don't hear from us again you crap <laughs> so that's what it did we they sent me a kit i built it and 15, I think it must have been 10 or 15 years, um, I built for them. Um, I had a few issues in, 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 in personal life and, and it ended up sort of stopping that I just couldn't, I couldn't build them anymore. Um, so I stopped for probably, well, I, I stopped, I thought I'd stop forever. Um, and then somebody came to me and said, um, that, the dad had basically bought this kit that he'd see. I didn't even know uh, Model Factory Hero had started making these kits. Actually, I got out, I'd been out of it for such a long time because I did do Model Factory Hero kits in 12th scale, but I didn't know they'd done uh, a 1 9th scale. Uh, and this gentleman who knew me from Sherman's, which was the, the model shop I used to work for, um, basically said, My dad's going to bought this kit. He's got no idea. Uh, I've got no idea. Can you give us a hand? And I said, Well, I don't build anymore. I haven't, I haven't built for such a long time. Um, me thinking it was one twelfth scale. Um, I didn't, as I say, I didn't know that Model Factory Hero had started one ninth scale kits. This was probably the first kit that they'd generally done. So he brought it round and said, "Look, you know, have a go." So I was surprised at the size, and I says, "Yeah, okay." I said it might turn into a mess, but it, and he was willing to take the risk. I said, it, "We'll see how it comes out like." So I took it on. Um, looking at the kit, it's a fantastic kit. Um, it's an expensive kit. It's something I would never never purchase for myself because it's just too expensive. Um, but saying that, as in the price for for, for me as a, as a modeler, because all I do is build. I I never have, I never keep the kits. They're, they're all my children, but they leave home and I never see them again. And uh, for me, they they turn into dust collectors. I put my heart into soul in every one of them, and then I move on to the next one. That's how it used to be. Um, this one has basically ended up here 
to cut a long story short, because the person who I was building for, um, he's no longer with us, so we'll leave it at that. Um, so it ended up that I basically ended up with a kit. And my, now my young nephew, he's into classic bikes. Uh, he's got the kit. You know, I gave him it as a as a Christmas present, which he was absolutely over the moon with. So it uh, it turned out in the end, it turned out that it, it from what one young gent, one one older gentleman didn't get to see, my young nephew has got it as a collector's piece, and he, he's really over the moon. So anyway, that's the back history. Let's start with the kit. Uh, the kit, as you can see, I'm not going to go over the build much because obviously you've seen by the pictures, and I'm really sorry about the the pictures. It, at the time, I was just taking photographs of me building it. It was never intended to really go on YouTube. I was never even thinking about putting it out there uh, and really sharing it with, with anybody. It was only afterwards that I took these pictures that friends and family had said, you, you want to put these on YouTube? And I didn't know you could do sort of slideshows and bits and pieces like that. I says, you know, um, and show people how it goes together. It's okay seeing these these things as the end result, but you they are hours and hours and hours of, of of work you know i tell one gentleman one of the the comments below that it, it like was six seven months um but that's hours of the day sometimes all day you know depending on what time i had building is is, is really and i know people who, who build models you, you you put bits and pieces in but you never have a time clock you never clock in and clock out when you build a model you, you basically just do bits and pieces when you can um and that's how it builds so to say how long it actually took in hours i, I couldn't tell you but it, it takes a lot of hours you know spoke in the wheels was probably um a couple of days per wheel um and then obviously cleaning up cleaning up the parts and, and bits and pieces that's what i can so this is the thing i'm thinking about doing in another in another build um if i do another build and if this one goes okay and then, like i said please tell me if you think it's rubbish um I'm going to think about doing a, a, a video thing of building everything. There will be a lot of videos. Um, I'll try and break it down as, as much as a complete build as I possibly can. But time, I work. So time and effort comes into it too. So it, it's not going to be like Coronation Street or Emmerdale every night where you're going to get an episode every day. Um, but I will try if you want me to um, and I can get the finances together. Um, I will try and do another, it will definitely be another Model Factory Hero kit. I'm looking at the, the Vincent Black Shadow because um, it looks quite a classic thing. I like the, the look of the bike. Maybe the Harley that they've done. Um, I don't know. I'm not really into American bikes, but we'll see. Um, I think for the UK, there's more people maybe who would like to see a classic British bike, maybe. I don't know. L let me know in the comments anyway uh, and see what you can see what you want to do. So, um but say going back to the kit, I'm not going to go through the build. I'll, I'll basically just show you around the bike some of the detail. There's a lot of detail I've added. Most of the screw heads and bits and pieces, like around the crankcase and around the seat and, and some other headstock uh, and on the front forks, I've added that. It doesn't come with the kit. They tend to use re uh, like a, a cast metal uh, nut heads, which I think don't look very nice. So basically I tapped out and threaded out the, the, the white metal. And I actually put in probably, probably a lot of screws and bits and pieces. I don't know whether you can get in for these pictures, really, um, to show you the detail. It's, it's My camera's not... As I say, I'm using a handheld phone. I'm not spending any money on this. I'm going to be brutally honest. Um, I'm going to basically show you it around with my phone and see if you can pick out the detail. Um, but all the screw heads that you would normally see as cast, I've basically not put on. Um, they've basically been taken off and put on with um, screws I bought. And all the stuff I bought, actually, including the kit that it came from, apparently, um, was through Hero Boy. So I thank uh, the guys there for helping me out, basically, with bits and pieces. I did have problems with the resin. Um, uh, I, this is the first time I've used two-pack resin. I normally use Tamiya, Tamiya paints. Um, I've never really been one for two-pack. I've been quite scared of it, actually. Uh, in the past um, for ruining my gun so I was a bit dubious and I, I contacted them and I said look what's the score do, do you have to run at work at 100 mile an hour otherwise you ruin your gun and they just laughed and says you have to work relatively quickly but you don't have to be you don't have to panic you know you have got an hour or so afterwards to um, 
to sort this stuff out. So I used the oldest gun I had when I first did it. And my God, the results, the, the, the hours and the time I'd spent to try and get it to gloss on other bikes that I'd made, um, it just didn't have an issue with two-pack. It glosses so, so much better. Um, and it's also covers immediately. I've had no reaction with any of the decals. The amount of time I've blown decals off uh, in the past because I've put too much um, lacquer on or it's crazed or it's blistered or whatever. Um, there's just none of that with this uh, with this with the two pack resin. So I wished I'd used this a long, long time ago. There would have been a lot of kits that would have turned out even better uh, in the past than what they've done. So um, the basically paint is is um, is all from uh, is all from Hero Boy. So uh, it's all zero paint, and so is the lacquer. So if you're asking to know what paint it was basically painted with, that's the basic paint I would uh, I would use. Um, Go go go! Speak to them. Whatever kit you're gonna do, um, they'll sometimes mix custom paint for you. Um, sometimes they'll, um, if they can, they will try and um, forfeit whatever you wanted to do. You know, whatever, whatever uh, sort of you, kit you're doing. Um, they've also got a load of parts. Most of the screw heads, and bits and pieces, they're not cheap, um, but they are really, really good. And I'm afraid. A lot of this stuff you don't see the 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 detail comes out basically with um cost it's price you know to 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 put these things together people don't always it's not always just time um it's obviously so yeah it's just obviously time um yeah most of these kits you see on on uh, in in on the internet generally there's a lot of extra parts that you know people don't always see this being put on. Uh, and unless the modeler actually tells you that these extra parts, people sometimes think it comes in the kit and and they generally don't. So, you know, that's a bit on the, obviously some on the detail side. You know, I do try to put on, um, try and make the things work if I possibly can. I don't know if I can show you on here. Um, the levers on these kits, it does actually move. But they're not really meant to move. And you can't really see them moving, but I know the move, so it gives me a bit of pleasure thinking that I've made something that shouldn't really move move. Um, and I say a lot of it is that the, the the screws I use because they're the threaded, so you can actually tap them out and, and make things make things work. Um, the actual gear linkage works as well, but every time I've moved it, it hasn't always gone. It's, it's broken, so I'm not even going to try that. So anybody that wants to see the break. That the gear linkage move i'm sorry but it's not happening um the other thing while we're around this area is the tank the tank gave me an immense amount of, of problems a lot of sleepless nights really if you want to call it sleepless nights is i couldn't get the finish i wanted on the tank um the headlight is obviously is is like aluminium so it looks like chrome it's metal so the tank was white metal uh, and it needed a lot of cleanup so you know painting it I tried painting it I tried painting it in in Alclad in the chrome and things and it just didn't look right it just didn't satisfy me really um the the actual brush superior tank is chrome it is really really shiny and it is extremely difficult to paint I even looked into electro plating um and there's some there's some stuff you can paint on plastic that's been on on YouTube I've looked that it's like a dipping process I don't even know what it is um, to give you a chrome finish, um, I even looked at that, but it was the size and the cost of the thing, you know, for to do two pieces. To be brutally honest, I, I just couldn't warrant the cost of going down electro plating and stuff. So, in the end, I used um, and a lot of models out there were mechanised is bare metal foil. Um, I've used bare metal foil on exhaust for years, doing the heat staining and 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 that using alclad and things, and it and it. It goes on really well. You know, I've got a bit of a knack of putting it on. Um, doing something this big, I've never done something this big. And it's so prominent on the tank. If you get it on wrong, it looks a mess. And, and there's probably half a sheet of, of bare metal foil I've thrown in the bin. Um, because there was just wrinkles in it. And and it's, and it's such a concave surface, as you can see. Uh, and the guys who, who, who models out there who's put it on will, will, will vouch me for this. It, 
to get it round concave surfaces, it can be a bit of a problem. You do waste quite a lot. You have to use quite a large piece to try and bring the wrinkles off the part you're using. Um, I couldn't do it with this piece. The, 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 the curvature was so heavy, it just wouldn't go. Uh, and so it's actually on in two pieces. So there is a join in it uh, in there. Um, you'll probably be able to see it from these pictures, actually. It, it was it was more it was more problematic than that, um, and the way I did it basically was to lay on the foil, and then I took some two thousand grit um, wet and dry, and I virtually feathered edged the chrome foil um, extremely carefully um, to try and reduce some of the the ridging on the foil to try and blend it into the other part. And then basically I polished it off with um, uh, chrome, for, uh, chrome paste. It's like a stuff called Autosol, which is what you use on your chrome bumpers on your car or, 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 or classic bikes and bits and pieces. And I auto-sold it um, to try and blend in the line, which I can still see it. And you might guys may be able to still see it probably if I turn it very slightly. But it wasn't pronounced as it was before. And it gave me a reasonable shine on the tank. Um, I try and look at it that these bikes tend to age. So from when they leave the factory to when they're actually ridden, the chroming does dull down a little bit. And so that's my my interpretation of this bike. It's been ridden a bit, although it's virtually brand new, obviously looking at the paintwork. Um, let's just say it's been ridden but well looked after uh, over the years. So um, we'll leave it at that for, for, for the way the tank looks. But that is the tank. that The biggest problem it gave me was the tank. The rest of it generally... Was 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 relatively a straightforward build as as, as building bikes. Um, the way I can say for building bikes, the way I look at it is is good reference material, and try and build as the original. You know, try and put in as much as you possibly can, as what the original had on it. You know, um, the way it's constructed. Uh, I know people have said about you know about pre-building this kit. It's always pre-built to make sure everything fits because nothing on the white metal kit fits. Generally, you have to sort. Although Battle Factory Heroes are pretty good, um, you you, you pre-build everything to make sure everything fits. But as for painting, um, I try and put stuff together that would be done in the factory. So, you know, the rear swinging arm would be would be sprayed as a complete thing. The frame would be sprayed as a, as a sep as a, as a as a complete thing. Try and put as much on um, as the frame you can that would be on the original as it's painted. The auxiliary items generally was fitted sep and painted separately, which Hopefully, if I do another video, you will see how I put stuff together. It's difficult to explain, but uh, I will try and go into a bit more detail on, on, on certainly on painting and, 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 and my equipment that I use and all the rest of it if, if I do that. So I'm trying to bring this video to the end because I'm trying to get into the 15 minutes. Um, I don't do a lot of videos, so I can't, I can't go over 15 minutes. So uh, I'm going to try and leave it at that as much as I can to say. Um, any Anybody wants any information, any comments, you know, I'm a wizzled old modeler, and if you have any problems with anything that um, you do in, in modeling or whatever, especially with bikes, um, hit me up. You know, we're all here to learn, and I'm not here saying that I'm the best modeler in the world. This is what I produce, and this is what I produce for probably over over time. My first models was horrendous, as everybody's generally was, and you get better over the years. Your last model is is your best model. Uh, and I'm sure if I build another one, there certainly would be things I've learned from this one that I, I wouldn't make the same mistakes in um, the next model. Uh, and I think that's how you should how you learn in life generally. You know, you learn from your mistakes, and if you if you um, try and put that that little bit of extra effort in that you that you've missed out on this one that you could have done that you wished you'd done, the model gets better. Uh, and that's how I've always learned, and I think that's how. Um, good models learn uh, and I think that's how you learn in life so uh, as much as I'm going to bring this video to the end please be honest like I says at the end of it don't don't be shy of the comments don't troll me don't don't you know be a bit be, be sort of nice if you possibly can um, but really really be be honest if you think it's not up to standard then please tell me um, and we'll bring the series to a close so thanks for watching the video and uh, keep modelling.